into public transport if you have to. If you don't have to, then like many things just now, don't do it. Uh, but follow the rules because that is uh, what you need to do to minimise any risks of getting the virus or passing it on to others. Do you want to say more about how people can... I was on public transport today. I, I cycled and got the train I, on a fairly essential journey to come here. There was uh, alcohol sanitizer at every entrance. The uh, staff and every other passenger I saw, I didn't see a single person without a face covering. The trains, I saw them being cleaned before I went on. I felt entirely safe. It is not 100% risk free. Of course it isn't. But it, it felt very, very safe at either end of that journey and during the journey. The, the only other thing I would add to the student question, if, if I could, is you asked what was different between last weekend and this weekend. We've put out new guidance. We've spoken to all the student associations. We've had a pause, which is what last weekend was, to kind of take a breath with the student population and say, look, th this, is, this is how serious this is. I had another call this week where I spoke to the president of the National Union of Students and the principals of the universities. The support in place, I think, is more thorough and deeper than it was perhaps uh, last week. I, I am confident that the students now know that guidance. We're not suggesting they can do any different. We're suggesting exactly as the First Minister said, they, are, they have the same rules now as you and I. Of course, if they're self-isolating or they're positive, they should stay where they are and they shouldn't be out in pubs after 10 o'clock at night. They should be in small groups. They should do all of those things and they shouldn't go back and have house parties. Can I just take a quick opportunity to uh, pay tribute to and thank the NUS in Scotland. Um, I spoke to the president last Friday, um, and, but they have been hugely helpful and responsible in, you know, being a, a critical friend to government where they thought we had to change things, but in helping us get these vital public health messages across to students. So I'm hugely appreciative uh, to them. Muir Dickey from the Financial Times. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times that the SNP needs to follow due process on the question of uh, whether or not to expel Margaret Ferrier. Uh, can you give us an idea of how long you expect that process to work? And given the seriousness of the situation, do you think it should be uh, handled as quickly as possible? And another question, if I might, um, looking at the overall picture of uh, cooperation between the Scottish and the UK government at the moment on coronavirus, how would you characterise how well the two governments are working together? And what do you think are the most pressing things that could be done to improve that uh, cooperation? Um, I, I can't give a time on due process. Look, I, I don't think we could have done any more, really, than uh, could have been expected of us. We've withdrawn the whip. I've made clear to her she should resign. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's probably tougher, firmer action than we've seen in circumstances like this uh, elsewhere. And, and it's the right action. And now, you know, I hope that she reflects on uh, the situation, that she reflects on what I've said to her and that she will do the right thing. If that doesn't happen, then I'm sure we'll be having these conversations um, later on. But, you know, let's just be clear here that there is no, uh, no jubiety and no equivocation um, on the part of the SNP over uh, this. Um, on the question of how I would characterise relationships between the, the four nations, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just be candid. I think at this particular point in time, better than they have been at some points over the past period of the pandemic. Um, but in some respects, probably still could be better. And that's a responsibility on the part of all of us. Um, I had uh, this week a very constructive call with Michael Gove to discuss the, the letter I'd sent to the Prime Minister the previous week about how we ensure that UK-wide or within each of the four nations, if we're having to take um, really a quick public health action that impacts on the economy, we are also equipped with the ability to... Uh, equally quickly and flexibly mitigate financially some of the, the consequences of those decisions. So that was a constructive call. Michael Gove, I think, uh, accepted uh, many of the points I was making and we've agreed, Scottish Government's agreed to put some proposals forward and he has agreed that we will then have some discussion um, around that. So, you know, yes, I, th I think in many respects better um, and I'll keep doing my bit to, to try to make sure that while we will all, you know, increasingly 
we'll come to different decisions depending on the, the state of the epidemic in different countries. Increasingly, we're coming to different decisions within each of the four nations as well as between each of the four nations. That's right and proper, but as much cooperation and alignment as we can uh, get is, I think, for the good of all of us. And I'll, I'll continue to try to do my bit to make sure that happens. The last question today is Rachel Russell from the Daily Express. Hello, First Minister. Um, my question is, can you guarantee the people of Scotland that SNP MPs or MSPs will always be asked to stand down when breaching any coronavirus guidelines or laws? Um, I can guarantee that I will take the action I think is right and proper and responsible and I will not stand here for party political reasons and try and excuse uh, behaviour. And I think I'm demonstrating that today. Um, I'm not going to start to speculate on things that might happen in the future and what our action might be. We, we have to judge things on their, you know, the circumstances that happen. But I would hope that we don't have SNP MPs and MSPs breaching the rules. I would hope that everybody... Uh, was uh, sticking to them and particularly now will be extra sure that they are, are sticking to them. Uh, I know that it is, and we've reflected this, none of us are perfect. These rules can be difficult and complicated. There will be occasions where people inadvertently breach rules and, and you will say to them, OK, we get that and don't do it again. This was a flagrant uh, and, and really serious breach of, of a rule that should not be in any doubt and that's why it's been treated as... Uh, it should never be an easy job, but at a time when it's got its particular challenges, obviously. Um, so I'm sorry for uh, having to stand here and talk about uh, the actions of an SNP MP uh, who breached the rules in a completely unacceptable way. Uh, but as I said earlier on, it's easy and when it's an opponent. Um, I think the test is if you're prepared to do it when it's one of your own. And I think the SNP has taken the right action. And it's because we understand how important it is that everybody sticks by these rules. So my thanks to all of you for doing that. Um, let me just appeal to everybody again to remember, uh, particularly not to go into each other's houses just now. That is the key measure right now to try to stop this virus spreading. Uh, but remember all of the other advice as well, in particular the facts advice, where your face coverings in any enclosed space or even just anywhere you are out and about, wear a face covering, avoid any crowded places, remember to clean your hands, take hand sanitizer with you, clean hand, hard surfaces because the virus can hang around there, keep two metres distance from people in other households and crucially, if you have symptoms, get tested and self-isolate. And that applies to MPs, MSPs, everybody in the country. That is really, really important. And I'm so hugely grateful to all of you for doing the right thing. Uh, thank you very much. Have as good a weekend as you can in these circumstances. And I will see you back here on Monday at 12.15.